we are not beggars. The World Bank and the IMF are designed to trap Africa in debt. Well, those are quotes from some African leaders who made bold to kick off all forms of shackles from the West at the just concluded new Global Finance Impact Summit held in Paris last week. The breakfast this morning will take a look at the success or otherwise of that summit. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some major headlines with an analyst who will join us to analyze the headlines on The Breakfast this morning. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's the mindset edition of the program and I am Maureen Menno Nguizigwe. Well, this morning we have loaded for you lots of things that we know would interest you. And... Um, being the Mindset Monday, today I want to talk about the power debt can have over your state of mind. The power that debt can have over your state of mind. If you owe people or you owe an organization, you lose your sleep. You lose your peace. Everything changes for you. Because we all know that he whose hand is above is stronger than he whose hand is beneath. I mean, it's, it's common knowledge. But... The world we live in now, it's become almost inevitable for people to seek for loan, either for uh, business or for education or for social welfare. So what happens to you when you find yourself indebted to either a company, a bank, or an individual? How does it affect your mind? What do you do if you can't pay back your debt, even though you wish to? There are those who owe people, but they do not want to pay back. But there are those who do want to pay back. They wish to pay back. They desire to pay back. But life happened to them, and then it became difficult, almost impossible or impossible to pay back. So what happens to your state of mind? How do you deal with the stress and the pressure of not being able to, to pay back your debt? Try and just keep calm, breathe, and talk to someone, someone who can advise you. Someone can help you pull through that moment because it will come and go. It will pass. Hopefully, you won't be, uh, you're not uh, indebted to companies that may seek to arrest you or take your name across all social media platforms to embarrass you. Owing is not something that anyone wants to do, especially if it is not to invest in a business. If it is to invest in a business, you're sure you've done your, you know, your homework. You know that, okay, if I invest this money, give it one year, give it two years, I'll be able to pay back. You make the necessary arrangement. You do the agreement with the bank. You know that, okay, I'm pushing sleepless nights tirelessly to make sure that the feasibility studies made, the feasibility report given on this business idea is coming through. And so you give yourself that time frame, you work hard at it so that you pay your debt. So what is your state of mind if you are in debt? It's the Mindset Edition of The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And our first up trending this morning, France is investing 600,000 euros to boost French language in Nigeria. That is a new development. They want to make French language a very strong second language in Nigeria, and they are investing that much money in it. And uh, the Embassy of France in Nigeria has officially set in motion projects that would place French, French as a second, the language of communication in secondary schools and the Nigeria public space. All right. They disclosed uh, this through their ambassador to Nigeria, Emmanuel Blatman, at the launch of the Solidarity Funds for Innovative Projects in French in Abuja. It's called the FSPI in French. It was launched in Abuja. And Blackman said the project was meant to strengthen French teachers in the country through a special fund. Known as the UJA, 
the FSPI project would make it easy to deploy the program in 50 schools in Enugu, Plateau State, Oyo, Lagos, and Abuja, where local partners have expressed a desire to intensify educational cooperation actions. Yes, yeah, so that is the news on the investment that France is bringing into the education sector in Nigeria. They want to boost their language here and make it a language of communication in the country. Our second top trending, transport. Transport administrators want truck drivers to work only at night. The president of the Chartered Institute of Transport Administration, Prince Shegu Ochuko Abayande, bemoaned the recent tragic incident on the Lagos Ibado Expressway that claimed the life of a truck driver. The incident happened in the early hours of Saturday when the truck driver lost control of his truck and collided with another tanker from behind, killing the driver. In a statement signed by Chiyungwe Ugwebute, Abayande called on the Truck Owners Association of Nigeria to prioritize the vigilance and physical fitness of its members before allowing them to operate on the roads. He also called upon the government to explore deliberate investments in railway infrastructure nationwide for the transportation of highly inflammable goods. No doubt the FRC needs to collaborate with every necessary agency to make sure that truck drivers do not drive recklessly on our roads. We've seen how crazy they can be on the roads. Oftentimes they give the impression that they are high on drugs, high on, you know, they're under the influence. They drive under the influence. Their vehicles are usually not in the best form of shape and then they drive as if they are drunk, they drive as if they are not normal. Uh, they've become killers on the wheel, they've become road terrorists, and people are scared when they come across trucks on the road. So uh, there may be the need to revisit the night driving policy for truck drivers in Lagos and across the country. They should be made to drive only very late at night when normal smaller vehicles are almost off the road at least from 11 12 midnight they can come out and drive making at least reduce the level of accident that they cause on our roads the tanker drivers the truck drivers have become a source of menace they become a menace on our roads many people now fear them they become road terrorists Almost on a daily basis, you see them driving recklessly on the roads, scaring people and endangering the lives of people, and including their own lives. So the government needs to do something about making sure that this is checked. It may also be important for them to enforce the compulsory use of retroreflective tapes to ensure uh, better sighting on the roads when these vehicles break down. Oftentimes when they break down, there is nothing to indicate that there is a heavy duty truck stationed in the middle of the road. And so you're coming, if care is not taken, you just, you've, you've seen people ram into them unknowingly because they didn't have the reflectors. They didn't have any kind of barriers to show oncoming vehicles that they have broken down and they are there. And so God help you if you're driving uh, and you're not aware that they're right in front of you. That's why driving at night is a very high risk thing to do. Driving in the rainy season is a very high risk thing to do. So the FRSC, uh, the F FRSC should help Nigerians and reduce the risks of driving in the rain, the risks of driving at night by ensuring that these heavy duty vehicles, these trucks are only driven very late at night when most drivers, most people are off the road for safety's sake. 
It is the Mindset Monday edition of The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. We'll give you the weather report and come back to take a look at what the newspapers are saying this Monday morning. Stay with us. <music> 